have a regret going by a name for so many years that's so similar to your very own? No, I think it works really well. Um, although when WWE, so I wrestled as Brian Danielson for 10 years. And then when I went to WWE, they wanted me to change my name. And they asked me to send a list of names. William Regal was actually the one who suggested Daniel Bryan so that fans would be able to follow me easily from the independents to the WWE. Whereas I had suggested things like Buddy Peacock and uh, and Lloyd Bonier, uh, <laughs> B-O-N with a tilde, tilde over the N, E-R. And... Uh, <laughs> And so, so yeah, the, uh, the, so it was a, it was probably a smart move. And then also an easy transition for fans to understand who I was after, after that run. Right. Well, knowing that now, I think you made the right choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I still imagine whole arenas chanting peacock, peacock, peacock. <laughs> the rumor mill says you got a little extra work to do on Saturdays now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the word on the streets. Yeah. So, do you want to speak about what that entails at all? Like, what what the so, new responsibilities are? I think I think it's a little bit probably overstated. People ask me about it all the time, and I really don't do that much extra. Uh, sometimes Tony asks me about like certain ideas or whatever for Collision, and sometimes he doesn't. You know what I mean? And so he's a very busy man. Football season started and all that kind of stuff, and so. I hear a lot less from him during football season than I did before football season started. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where these shows are still Tony Khan produced shows. And most of these ideas are Tony Khan ideas. And so uh, he, he'll sometimes he'll, he'll ask me something and I, I might have some input and he might change his idea. And sometimes he won't, you know, so that that's uh, like, I think I'm just more of a, a sounding board than anything else. Now, you dropped a bombshell a couple weeks ago uh, saying that this is going to be your last year as a full-time wrestler. Mm -hmm. I've also heard you say that you wanted to wrestle until you're 80 years old. So yeah. what what's with the change of heart? Do you still see yourself in the wrestling business after the year? or? Yeah, so I mean, I, uh, I don't think I'll ever – I don't think I'll ever – accept the idea of just full on retirement and then I'll never wrestle again, but I do need to stop wrestling as much as I am. And I think this, this contract that I'm in right now, when it ends, will be the last contract that I ever sign. Um, and I, I can't state that for a fact, but I, I mean, I certainly don't want to wrestle full time anymore. Or once this contract is up, I really want to enjoy this last year as a full-time wrestler, but uh, my priorities are shifting. You know, I've got two kids, they're in that age range too, where they still deeply want to be around me. And I don't want to lose that because my daughter who's six, once she starts turning into a teenager, she's not going to want, she's not, she's not going to want daddy as much. Right. I want to, I want to be there and I want to be present while she still wants me to be there. You know what I mean? And then by the time that's done, I'm going to be into my fifties and then full-time wrestling then is, is, you know, some people are doing it, oh, people yeah. are doing it. but I, I don't, I don't know if that's for me. I put my body through a lot already. So how's the arm healing by the way? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's doing okay. It's uh, I think by continually wrestling on it, I'm slowing it down from healing 100%. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, but you know, uh, us older wrestlers like to say we'll never, we never anticipate being a hundred percent ever again. So, um, so I think that's that's kind of where I'm at. Like it's fully functional. I can do like pull ups and I can do all these different sorts of things. It's just the mobility is still like not like doing this hurts right, whereas doing this on my left side doesn't hurt at all. You know, so it's like uh, so it, it's just that kind of thing. You know, there's there's nothing that's going to happen to the bone because they put a rod in it with nine screws. So the, uh, the dangerous parts, the doctor said is actually where it breaks. If it were to a break again, it's easier to break where the rod ends because the rod itself acts as like a fulcrum that it could bend against. Um, but then really it's like the nerve and muscle damage, you know, that uh, part of that is because I wrestled for 10 minutes with a broken arm. And then part of it is, you know, uh, just the work that we do. So. Yeah. Um, now, switching gears here. Uh, a couple days ago, huge match against Swerve, who, might I say, I, I think that dude's ready to take the next step. He's awesome. You guys put on a classic. Uh, got a little unexpected help from Hangman. 
and we're going to see you in the main event this Saturday in Toledo. Uh, talk to me about that, and correct me if I'm wrong. This is you. You haven't held gold in AEW, have you? No, I haven't won any championships in AEW. And actually, you know, when I came to AEW, uh, you know, obviously everybody, most people want to be AEW world champion. But I've always had a fascination with um, the WCW TV championship like when Arn Anderson would hold it or William Regal would hold it, you know, like, and they were constantly defending that title every week or on multiple times per week on multiple different shows. And that, that was always kind of my favorite title. And so that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm aiming for is this idea of it being, if you're TNT champion, I would love to be TNT champion because that means that you get to defend that title every week. And my favorite style of wrestling are championship style matches, right? And one of the amazing things about AEW is that we're able to bring in talent from all over the world, from multiple companies. And not, and not only do we have an insane talent roster ourselves, but we, you know, we'll have uh, luchadors from AAA, but now we've got luchadors from CMLL. Mystico is going to be there next week on Rampage uh, facing Rocky Romero. And so, and then we get the, the new Japan, that uh, new Japan talent that comes in. And so like when you just think of the ch championship matches I could have with so many different people every single week on TV. I mean, that's this kind of stuff that gets me excited, you know? So I, I, I'm really looking forward to this match with Christian cage tomorrow. Gotta be awesome. I'll be there with my three kids. We bought tickets the day they went on sale. So I'm looking. Oh, forward. that's great. Um, yeah, and I, I also want, I also want to say, uh, so that on this last Tuesday was the first time I'd ever been in the ring with Swerve, you know, and I'd, I'd watched him wrestling before and he's just, he's, he's that next level of great, you know what I mean? And so he's uh, like, just, you know, seeing him as one thing, being in the ring with him is a, is a completely different thing, but he, that dude's something special. It's funny you bring up the WCW television title when they first started selling replicas way back in the day. That was the first one I had to get. I, I love that title. <laughs> Everything it stood for, like, it, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool because you'd watch, like, WCW Saturday Night and then WCW Worldwide and then, WC like, all these different things. And the TV title was always being defended. And it was just such a such a neat title. And I think AEW's done a great job with the TNT Championship of making it, a, it, it very similar to that. And it's in some levels, I mean, hey, the WCW TV Championship never main evented a pay-per-view. The... AEW TNT Championship just main evented Wrestle Dream. So, I mean, I think AEW has done a great job with that title. I think so, too. There was a picture out there on the internet of you, Soraya, and your new assignee, Adam Copeland, standing in the ring together. And a couple of years ago, I mean, who would have thought the three of you would all be in that ring again, doing what you love to do? I mean, how, how does that feel? How, how did it feel in that moment? Yeah, I mean, it was just a cool realization because all three of us had matches on Tuesday. It was just, uh, and we were all kind of in the ring before the show, warming up and that sort of thing. And there was just this realization, I think it was Soraya who had it first, was that, hey, we're all in the ring together and we've all got matches tonight. Like, this is surreal because we were all told at different points that we'd never wrestle again. I did say that between the three of us, you combine the three of our necks together and I don't think you even have one complete neck, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is like, it is cool. And it also is a testament to um, uh, the advancement of medical technologies, but also all three of us, you know, we, we were told we shouldn't do this anymore and keep, we kept fighting through. Right. And that's just kind of a, you know, and one thing feeds off another, when you hear somebody, somebody else has been able to come back, well, then you think like, okay, maybe I can come back and that sort of thing. And those sort of reinforcing stories like help us all. Absolutely. So you got into Toledo today, I take it. I got in, la I got in, I got in last night. Okay. Have you found any good food around here? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a, I, I don't want to say no because I haven't had time to look around. Uh, I went to first watch, which is a chain. But uh -huh. it does have like, uh, it does have good options for me and that sort of thing. But um, but yeah, I haven't had time to explore because I've been doing media most of the day. <laughs> okay, you're still living the vegan lifestyle, I take it, or no, 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 no. So uh, I'm 
I don't even like to say that I'm I'm even like mostly vegan or anything like that because that's just kind of a cop out. I started uh, I started incorporating more eggs and more um, salmon into my diet just for just for brain health reasons, right? So it's like getting those uh, getting those this, like really nutritious fats from real foods um it's really good especially i've had a i have a history of concussions and that sort of thing so it's mostly a i went vegan for health reasons and i stopped being being vegan for health reasons too so that's interesting yeah yeah it's crazy the uh i mean the research is always changing but i try to kind of follow it and keep up on it and that sort of thing but but really try to focus on getting healthy fats like a lot of avocados and walnuts and that sort of thing too uh just for brain health gotcha it's been a little over a year now right that you've been in AEW. oh my gosh it's been over two years now are you serious yeah it's been no over concept two years. of time anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I found that you know, once we had kids, I lost all sense of time. Oh, right? yeah. and so and so it's like, uh, but yeah, I've been in uh, I've been in AW over two years now, and then um, this is uh, this is my last, uh, this is my, you know, I've got less than a year left now, and and yeah, I've I've really enjoyed it. The you know, there, the differences, to me, there's a difference in freedom. Um, a little bit in the ability, your ability to do kind of more things that you would like to do. Um, and I, I, in no way, shape or form, do I want to put down the WWE system because I loved my time there. I loved working with the people there. Uh, but, but I've enjoyed the freedom and the ability to wrestle like different people. You know, like there were a lot of, I had a laundry list of people that I wanted to wrestle with, you know what I mean? And so AEW brings in people who aren't contracted with AEW to get to wrestle them. And I like the variety and one of the big things that I like too is that for given what my goals are now in life, which is to be the best father and to be the best husband I can, the AEW schedule suits me better. You know, um, I tend to uh, be gone just a little over 48 hours every week, you know, traveling away from my family versus my last. And I know that they don't run this hard of a schedule now, but my last full-time year in WWE, I did 227 matches, right? So that's a lot. That's a lot on me physically, but it's also a, a lot like it's a lot of time away from the family and a lot, you know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's been, you know, for me, the, the biggest difference. And also from a presentation standpoint, um, WWE presents more of a, you know, and they'll even call it this. They even call it a more sports entertainment program where we're a wrestling program. Our our main focus is the wrestling. And I like that as well. Yeah. Now you brought up your laundry list of people who, who tops that list. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the biggest people, my favorite people that I've really gotten a chance to wrestle since I've, and I don't want to say, these are my favorite ones, but I mean, like the list that I had when I left and came here were people like Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, Okada. I wanted to wrestle Zack Saber Jr. You know, and some of those people were in AEW and some of them weren't. But I just thought I'd have a better chance of being able to wrestle them coming to AEW. And then you get you know surprises as far as like uh, being able to wrestle like Daniel Garcia, being able to wrestle MJF for an hour, right? And so, um some of these things are, are just really cool. And some of the things that are, have also been really cool and really fun in this, in this period that I've been in AEW are some of the surprises um, like William Regal coming to AEW and being part of the Blackpool combat club. I mean, I really enjoyed, there was a time period where I didn't know if I'd ever see him again. And then I got to see him every single week and we got to drive together and we'd come in and we'd show up early and we'd help train people together and that sort of thing. And, um, and so when he left, it was sad for me personally, but I was grateful that I got to spend that time with him, right? And uh, Claudio Castagnoli coming over, and I've been so grateful that to be able to spend time with him. And honestly, the BCC is so close. Like, you know, I love Moxley. I love Yuta, right? Like being able to spend time with them has been, it's been a real blessing for my life. You know what I mean? And just cementing friendships that will hopefully be there the rest of my life yeah i love what you guys are doing it's awesome bringing back oh, that thank school you. feel 
yeah you never know what to expect when you guys are around <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's what we like we like we, we like to uh, for people to not know what's going to happen when the bcc is out there that's awesome uh you brought up the schedule and obviously it works for you 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 put in your time you've honed your craft what about the younger guys do you think the AEW schedule is beneficial for the guys who haven't wrestled 227 matches a year or whatever uh so i think i'm of the opinion that when you're younger and learning the craft you need to wrestle more matches that's just that's my opinion uh one of the things that was very helpful for me is I would go over and I'd wrestle in England. And, you know, there's this um, uh, thing that WWE would put out when they'd say they'd cut, they, people would cut promos on me specifically or somebody else like me. And they'd say like, oh, well, of course this, you only wrestle four times a month or whatever. And I was like, dude, I would go over to England for seven months. And there was one point where I wrestled, I think it was like 28 matches in 17 days or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And it was like, it was six months of that. Right. And so it was like, but I'd go and I'd wrestle these shows for the Butlin, for the Butlins crowds, which were, they're not wrestling fans. They, they pay for this week, week long um, holiday where they can come and the entertainment is included. And there just so happens to be wrestling as a part of that. And so they're not even wrestling fans but you're having to entertain them and that sort of thing through wrestling. And those sorts of things uh, really made me the wrestler that I am today. Because when I started, I was really, you know, I was very good at the technical aspects of wrestling, but what was harder for me was the personality and interacting with the crowd and that sort of thing. And so nobody comes out of wrestling school, the perfect wrestler. There's always stuff that you have to work on. And even if you're the most athletic person in the world or you're the most charismatic person in the world, you still have things that you need to work on and you need to be able to work on those things in places where there's not a million people watching you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And also, I also think in this day of like, uh, if you're on TV with, and a lot of our younger talent is on social media all the time, you know, if you're younger and you don't have that much experience, people are going to rip you apart, no matter how good you are for the stage you are in your career, right? You could be, you look at uh, Daniel Garcia, who's, I think he's 24, but I, I could be wrong. Uh, or you look at MJF, who's really, he's only 27, right? Crazy. You look at these guys and people be like, oh, well, he's not this or he's not that. And, and I, in my head, I, and sometimes people take it personally in my head i want to say you guys are are in your 20s you're doing great and these and people and because social media is such a big thing and it wasn't when i was 26 and 27 right it wow. wasn't that big of a, nobody was ripping me apart when i was 26 or 27 in the current day and age people do that and so uh especially if you're on national tv so like uh i i think getting a lot of reps is important and i think getting a lot of reps where less people are going to criticize you is is also like it's a helpful tool to learn to do this as best as you can hey everybody this is brian danielson from aw here on game day nation and tomorrow night in toledo ohio at the huntington center come see me challenge for the tnt championship it's going to be amazing